abundance and their need so that their abundance may be for your need in order that there may be a fair balance as it is with as it is with as it is written the one who had the one who had much didn't have too much and the one who had little didn't have too little this is the word of 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 the This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. And we will have our gospel reading of Mark chapter 5, verses 21 to 43 by Sister Soraya, right? When Jesus had crossed again, when, when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he. And he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, the synagogue named Jairus, came and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may she made well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed, and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians, physicians, physicians. <coughs> And, and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. His cloak. For she said, if, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, Who, who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing that happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your, your daughter is dead. Why trouble to teach her any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When he came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he said, A commotion. He saw a commotion, 
people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. They, then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and, and, and went in there where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talia Chum, which means little girl, get up. And, and immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. This, this, at this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one would know, that no one should know this, and told them to give, to give her something to eat. This is the, this is the word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Proverbs 3, 5. Amen. So, we're happy you still couldn't be with us today, unfortunately. That's not what we're happy about. We're happy that we're here to celebrate all of our graduates, those going on to higher education, to college, and those going on to um, middle, um, high school. So I have some poems here, and I did ask some, some of the members of the congregation to read. One of my most favorite books I had as a teacher was I Am Amazed. And it's funny, the, the simple things that can amaze you, especially children and youth. I am amazed by those who show up and reach out and look within. I am amazed who, by those who say hello and goodbye with the same sincerity and trustworthiness. I admire those who are afraid to take the journey but still open the door. I admire those at the other side who let you in and offer you to stay. So as our children embark on another part of the journey in their lives, we want them to be bold. We want them to go with God. We want them to go with everything that we do here to uplift them and to make them others know that they are children of God. So I'm going to ask. Sister Starks, if she would read hers. And if you want to read it from there, it's okay. Or up here. <laughs> okay. Huh? Praise God this morning, God. giving God the honor and praise to our pastor and members of our pulpit this morning, our guest speakers and liturgists, and the congregation. Amen. A graduation blessing. Embarking on a journey which began some time ago, how could you have imagined all the things that you come to know? You learned to use each challenge as an opportunity to overcome each problem despite adversity. It wasn't always easy keeping up with things at school, but you held on to your beliefs and followed the golden rule. You found your voice and chose a path that honors who you are, and that I think may be your greatest lesson learned so far. But no one could be proud of the person you've become, and that is why I'm confident that the best is yet to come. May you never waste a moment wishing life was not unfair. Rather, use the gifts God gave to you to change the world out there. Your graduation signals us that you are on your way. So spread your wings, my graduates, forever and a day. Congratulations to the graduates of 2024. Amen. Amen. on Zoom. I want to first congratulate all the graduates for 2024. Congratulations. As you begin your next chapter, always remember you are braver than you believe, stronger than you stronger than you've seen smarter than you think and love more than you ever know good luck on your next journey good luck amen, amen. 
to all the other graduates. All I want to say is that you got to be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And that's from Joshua 1 to 9. Before you, all your dreams. Around you, all who love and support you and pray for you. Within you, your love of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All you need to go forward. We pray for you. We stand by you. We stand with you. We support you. We congratulate you. Graduates of 2024. University. 
That's far! <laughs> That's far away from us! Congratulations, Zahir. We wish you Did well. They hear? Did they hear what you did yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to the University of Arizona. <laughs> just want to acknowledge our pastor's educational achievement and congratulate her on her ordination this June. And we just want to give her a small token because she is a graduate as well. Congratulations to all the graduates of 2024. Sister Jackie will have, will be, she's going to do a, clo a closing prayer. I know today is graduation Sunday, but it's also Youth Sunday. And thank you, Bethel, for the flowers and for acknowledging me on my ordination. God bless you all. But today we like to acknowledge a special young lady in our midst who has been faithful serving as our usher, and that is Sister Soraya Wright. Amen. So come, Sister Soraya. I just want to acknowledge her on this Youth Sunday, Graduation Sunday, uh, for our achievement of being an usher here. So we would like to continue to pray for Soraya, and Sister Lenny works with her as our usher, but she's been doing a marvelous job. Amen? Amen. So this is Sister Jackie, can you please pray now, please? Good morning, Bethel. Sorry for the delay. Good morning, Bethel. Grace morning. and peace be unto you from God our Father. Congratulations to all the graduates and all of those that are moving up. I'm so proud of each and every one of you. And I pray that you will continue to do all the great things that you have done at Bethel in this world. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this moment in time that you have given us. Thank you for the children that you have allowed us to minister to, dear Lord. We pray that their paths will be filled of health, wealth, and knowledge. We pray that they will continue to lean on you whenever they are in distress, whenever they need somebody to talk to. Let them go to you, dear Lord. And as they continue on their path of this is a path 
unknown to them, dear Lord. This is a path that is full of all of the things in the world that could turn them away from you, dear Lord. We're asking that you keep their eyes on you, dear Lord, as they continue their study. We, bless, we pray that you bless each and every family that is represented here today, dear Lord. Pray for the grandmothers, the aunts, the uncles, and the mothers and fathers who have gotten these children to this point, dear Lord. And as they go forth in life, let them think of this as a memory. Let them think of this as one door closing and another door opening. Another door that will be bigger and brighter in their lives. Continue to let them use their gifts, dear Lord, that you have given them. Each one of them have a gift, dear Lord. And I pray that you will continue to allow them to use it. Because there's nothing that they can do if they keep their eyes on you, dear Lord. And as I say to each and every one of them, you can do it. You can do it. I believe in each and every one of you. And Pablo, I believe in you. You know that. And each and every one of you, I believe in you too. But that's just our little special saying. I believe in you, Pablo. So as I close in this prayer, I'm just asking the Lord to bless each and every one of the children that are in Bethel today. And even herself, she's not in Bethel, but she's a part of Bethel. As they continue on life's journey, and please make their path a little easier than what it can be, than what it is right now out there in this world. I give all of this to you, and Father God and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Preparation, which is joyful, joyful, we adore, th we adore thee.
Good morning, congregation. <clears throat> May God bless me as I bring the word of the today from the Lord. But before I start, I'm happy to see that we have a full church. Haven't seen this packed since before COVID. <laughs> and hello to the viewers on Zoom as well. <clears throat> today is a day of celebration, a day of reflection, and a day of anticipation. We gather here not only to worship and give thanks, but also to honor the achievements of our graduates. This moment marks the accumulation of years of hard work, dedication, and perseverance. As you stand on the threshold of new beginnings, it is fitting that we turn to the word of God for guidance and inspiration. The, my message today will be given on the scripture, 2 Corinthians verse, verse 8, line, line 7 through 15. Graduates, as you prepare to embark on new journeys, this passage often profounds wisdom of encouragement. It seeks the virtues of faith, generosity, and community, values that we serve and that we should serve as your compass and your journey ahead of you. Paul commends the Corinthians for excelling in faith, speech, knowledge, earnest, and love. As you move forward, strive to excel in all the aspects of this in your life. Your education has equipped you with knowledge of skills, but true excellence encompasses character, integrity, and compassion. Let your faith be the foundation upon which you build, build your future. Remember, it's not only about achieving success, but also becoming a, a better person of virtue and grace. As you reflect on your accomplishments, consider how you use your gifts to make a difference in the world. Paul's message encourages us to look beyond ourselves and embrace a spirit of generosity. Paul encourages the Corinthians to excel in giving. This is not merely about financial contrib contributions, but about also a spirit of generosity in all things. As you embark on your career and personal endeavors, cumulative, cultivate a heart that seeks to give, whether it be your time, your talents, or your resources. Remember that the measure of a life well lived is not based on how much money you can accumulate, but in what you can give away. True fulfillment comes from serving others and making a positive impact on the lives of others and those around you. In this world that often emphasizes self-interest, let your actions reflect the sincerity of your love. Love is more than words. It is demonstrated through the deeds. Paul speaks of testing the sincerity of love through actions. In your interactions with others, let your love be genuine and selfless. Serve those around you with humility and kindness, reflecting the love of Christ in all you do. Whether you find yourself in a boardroom, classroom, dorm room, hospital, or any other place, let your actions speak louder than your words. Show compassion, understanding, and empathy to everyone you encounter. As you pursue your dreams and goals, Remember that the journey requires perseverance and commitment. Paul urges the Corinthians to follow the work they started. Just like Paul, your parents and all the supporters and people in your village have motivated you and, motivated you and pushed you to keep going. They have been in the same shoes you are in now, graduating, and now they are passing the baton onto you. It's your job to keep going and continuing the race your parents, grandparents, great grandparents and on so on, and so on that have started before you graduates you have achieved a significant milestone but this is just the beginning continue to pursue your goals with diligence and perse perseverance when challenges arise remember that god's grace is sufficient and he will provide the strength you need to complete the work he has done he has set you to do before you do not be discouraged by setbacks Instead, view them as opportunities for growth and learning. Finally, as you navigate the complexities of life, remember the importance of equality and community. Paul emphasizes the significance of moral support within the community. Paul emphasizes the importance of equality and mutual support within the community as you step into diverse environments. Be advocates for justice and equality. Use your gifts to uplift others and create space where everyone can thrive. Recognize that we all are interconnected and our well-being is tied to the well-being of others. Strive to build bridges, foster understandings, 
and promote unity in all of your endeavors. In conclusion, dear graduates, as you venture into the world, carry with you the lessons of faith, generosity, love, perseverance, and community. May you excel in all things you do, giving glory to God and serving others with a joyful heart. Remember the words of Paul, for you know the grace of your Lord, Jesus Christ, that, through he, that though he was, he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty be, may become rich. May, Lord, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his, face, may his faith shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may he give you the peace as you embark onto the journey of others. So I say this in closing. As Estelle Shepherd goes on to high school, Leilani Wright, George Winston House, Parisha Asana to Manhattanville University, Pablo Asana onto college as well, and myself onto University of Arizona. Have a genuine and graceful heart. Amen. Amen. We will now have our hymn of invitation, um, which is only trust him. Please stand.
to ask all the graduates to come forward. All graduates in the church today, please come forward. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we we'll ask Pastor. As you were ordained, Pastor, <laughs> this is your garden. This is your garden. We are also part of your garden, and we want to say thank you for continuing to water your garden. And we pray that you. As you, as you continue in your journey as a pastor, we want to say thank you, first off, for continue to choose, to choose us as your flock to lead. As we continue to look to God and ask God to strengthen you, we want to say thank you as you, <laughs> we, we want to just give you a token of our thanks. And so, from the children of Bethel, thank you. And congratulations on your ordination. <laughs> and all the graduates here today were baptized, christened, confirmed here at Bethel. Some of the graduates, uh, we have Brother Jamal Asana, yes. Brother Preston Asana, and Sister Naomi Asana. Turn and face the congregation. All right. Doing a prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with hearts full of gratitude and joy as we celebrate the achievements of these graduates. We thank you for guiding them through their studies, for the wisdom and knowledge they have gained, and for the perseverance they have shown. Lord, as they step into the next chapter of their lives, we ask for you to we ask for you your continued guidance and protection. Grant them clarity in their decisions, strength in their challenges, and courage to pursue their dreams. May they use their education not only for, the, for personal success, but also to make a positive impact on the world around them. Bless them with opportunities that align with their passions and talents. Surround them with positive friends, supportive friends, mentors, and communities that will encourage them and uplift them. Help them to remain humble and grounded, always remembering the values and lessons they have learned. We pray that they find fulfillment and purpose in their endeavors and that they carry forward the spirit and curiosity and lifelong learning. May they be in instruments of your peace, love, and justice in all they do. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Almighty God, we ask that you just come to the strength of the brother Zahir. Father God, we pray that you just cover him, O oh God, when he goes to the University of Arizona. Father God, help him in his studies, let him be focused on studying and continue to direct his path, O oh God, and help him to just continue to excel in the ways of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is the class of 2024. Amen. Oh, wow. Come for a 
We will have the um, the prayer of confession, which we will read together. God of celebration and sorrows, we wave the flag this weekend, this weekend and our hearts beat with pride at the stuttering voice of the bands. Fireworks and blazing the skies, and families gather for celebrations. But in, in too many places, places there is a to, to celebrate. Our, Our spirits ache for people bold and wide. So and struggle just to have, have the basic necessities of life. While we, we have in abundance. abundance. Forgive us when, when our celebration clouds the needs of others. others. It, it is important for us to celebrate. celebrate but we must never forget that you have given us a ministry and mission to perform here and now. Help us be mindful of the many ways in which we can reach out to others, but our attitudes and our actions may be those who bring hope, comfort, healing, and peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The words of assurance. The Lord who made the heavens and the earth hears our cries and answers our calls. Hope in the Lord when the, whose steadfast love endures with us forever. Amen. Amen. We will now have the presentation of tithes and offering.
God, we offer our gifts with open hearts, recognizing that our generosity reflects our faith in you and your actions in the world. Just as the Corinthian church desired to give, may our giving be a reflection of the gospel in which we believe. Help us to share according to what we have, knowing that in the body of Christ we are bound together in a relationship, offering help and hope to one another. Amen. 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 Our closing hymn will be America the Beautiful. benediction. Christ's touch has healed you. God's love has restored you. The spirit goes with you. Go in peace to share the joy of God's love. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. seated for a moment of silent reflection. Our guest speaker brothers are here today. Amen. Amen.